I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. As to the subpoenas, I can't talk to these people. The FBI won't let me talk to the case agent and the intel analyst. I don't know if Mr. Durham's talking to him or not, but I think the committee has an obligation to find out what happened when the Department of Justice and the FBI were put on notice that the central document necessary to get a warrant no longer was reliable. And how do you explain that it was used twice after the January interview in April and June? And the court was misled. Because in the application, it says the subsource was interviewed. He was truthful and cooperative. Mr. Horowitz tells us something different. He found the interview that was uh, the memo based on the interview that was pretty stunning. Here's the other question, Mr. McCabe. Mr. McCabe said he never misled Mr. Rosenstein. Somebody misled the court. Now, is it possible Mr. McCabe, who was in charge of this investigation on a regular basis, had no knowledge that the <clears throat> dossier was uh, disavowed by the Russian subsource? Maybe so, but I would be shocked if one of the most high profile cases in the history of the FBI, it didn't make it out of the basement that, hey, our case just fell apart. So if he didn't know, he should have known, and how could he not have known? If he did know, and if Comey knew, and they continued to seek a warrant after they knew the dossier was unreliable, then they should be held accountable either criminally or otherwise. And nobody knows the answer to that question. And we're going to get to the answer to that question. Senator Cornyn. Mr. Chairman, I support uh, the investigation into this rogue FBI counterintelligence investigation known as Crossfire Hurricane. But I think what Mr. Rosenstein pointed out to us yesterday and something we all know from the Department of Justice org chart is the FBI director is supposed to be accountable to the Deputy Attorney General. And yet Director Comey basically was conducting this investigation along with the, the Deputy the Director McCabe and others. and. Sally Yates and Loretta Lynch didn't have a clue what was going on. You remember what uh, Sally Yates' reaction when uh, they talked about the Kislyak Flynn conversation. She was surprised that there was actually an ongoing investigation. I think it was uh, Crossfire Razor, as I understand, as I recall, as a subset of Crossfire Hurricane. So I, I, it occurs to me that in addition to questions I have about the FISA court that I've talked to Senator Lee and others about and its function, whether it actually serves as a check and oversight on, on uh, the FBI and counterintelligence investigations because it basically is a non-adversarial process, that we ought to look at more fundamental issues like is the FBI the right agency to, to, to handle counterintelligence investigations. They are the premier law enforcement organization in the world. But on counterintelligence, particularly where it is completely unsupervised um, and where there's so much opportunity for mischief, as we've seen in, uh, as laid out in Inspector General's report, I think we ought to be asking some of those kind of fundamental questions. And I hope that we can work with you and our colleagues across the aisle to look at all of that. Because after 9-11, the FBI took on a whole new role in, um, in counterterrorism and counterintelligence matters and really outside of its, or its traditional wheelhouse. So uh, I just wanted to plant that seed. I haven't thought it all the way through yet. It's just sort of a kernel. Uh, but I think we need to be asking some fundamental questions and get some answers. Thank you. Senator Feinstein. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me begin with this, and I'm going to take a few minutes. I think it's important uh, to note that the committee has never heard from Mr. Mueller and his team. Um, yesterday, you questioned Mr. Rosenstein about whether there was any there there to justify investigating possible ties between the Trump campaign and Russia. I wrote you a letter signed by every Democrat on this committee on May 8, 
2019 that says we're writing to you to follow up on our request, this is a follow up, that the committee hold a hearing with Special Counsel Mueller regarding his report on Russian electoral interference and obstruction of justice. The Mueller report is a seminal document that caps the Special Counsel's nearly two year investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. As comprehensive as the report is, it is clear that there are many outstanding questions that remain unanswered. Uh, the attached document identifies at least 60 unanswered questions related to both Russian interference and obstruction of justice. We believe that Robert Mueller would be best suited to answer these and other questions. I would like to put the, this in the record, Mr. Chairman. We asked for this over a year ago, and there was no answer to our plea. So now I want to address the chair's authorization for subpoenas. C could I just uh, make one comment? Sure. Uh, the reason, well, you could read the Mueller report for yourself, I guess, but uh, Mr. Mueller is a great patriot, served this country for a long period of time. I'm not adverse to having somebody from the Mueller team come and tell the committee what they did and how they did it. As a matter of fact, I think that's a really good idea. I'm not so sure Mr. Mueller would be the best person now, but maybe Mr. Wiseman. But I think uh, I agree with you. I think we need to understand how the Mueller team worked. And I am very open to getting somebody from the Mueller team over here during the course of our inquiry. So I just want to let you know that that's not an unreasonable request. Well, thank you. Uh, we sent you this letter over a year ago asking for Mr. Mueller. I think Mr. Mueller is a man of extensive brain cells and can well uh, recall the situation. I think this side would very much like to have him here. So I'll just leave you with that. Uh, today, I want to address the chair's authorization for subpoenas. Our committee rules provide that a subpoena can be issued by the chair with the agreement of the ranking member or a vote of the committee. In this case, neither was done. The chair's motion is, in a sense, an end run around committee rules. It does not require either the ranking member's agreement or a vote on a specific subpoena. Instead, it would give the chair sole authority to issue hundreds of subpoenas. This removes the minority from any role in the issuance of a subpoena. This leads me to believe that this is a move to grant the majority total control over investigations and prevent the minority from gaining information in crucial areas. This would allow the majority to present a one-sided selective account of the facts, and we oppose that. With this motion, the chair has granted unbridled authority to issue subpoenas for literally any document or witness related to Crossfire Hurricane. The early stages of the FBI's investigation into the Trump campaign's ties to Russia. It also allows subpoenas for 53 officials named in the motion the vast majority of whom served under President Obama. Using a single motion to authorize subpoenas for 53 people and possibly hundreds more documents and witnesses is unprecedented in this committee. I asked my staff to search committee records to find just one comparable example. They could not find a single instance where this committee has authorized subpoenas for 53 people in a single vote. In addition, the committee has not been provided with explanations for why any of these people have been listed. For example, why is Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu on the list? Or Steve Reschetti, Joe Biden's chief of staff, who is currently a senior advisor on Biden's presidential campaign? Why is he on this list? John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign chair, is also on this list, even though he has already testified twice before the House Intelligence Committee 
and the transcripts of his testimony are publicly available. And we have been given no explanation as to why Samantha Power, former ambassador to the United Nations, warrants a subpoena from this committee. Put simply, this motion, and I'm sorry to say this, but I believe it, grants the chair unbridled authority to go after Obama-era officials. I can't support this kind of dragnet authority to conduct politically motivated investigations. And I urge my colleagues on both sides to consider carefully whether we want to set this as a precedent going forward. In my time on this committee, which is well over 20 years, we have always been careful about the use of subpoena authority. We've required specific explanations of what information is being sought, why we need it, and whether this compulsory process against any specific individual is truly warranted. In fact, our rules are designed to ensure that the committee issues subpoenas following bipartisan consultation and cooperation, and we have historically done so. Our last subpoena was three years ago, in 2017, when Chair Grassley and I agreed to subpoena Paul Manafort. In 2007, the committee authorized several subpoenas by voice vote to White House and Justice Department officials involving the U.S. attorney firing scandal. With the ranking member's consent and following a bipartisan vote, we also authorized subpoenas concerning the Bush administration's warrantless wiretapping program. And Chairman Leahy's 2008 authorization of legal counsel's torture memos followed years of bipartisan efforts to obtain those materials. I must say, the chair's motion is a significant departure from this tradition of bipartisan cooperation, and I'm really surprised. And once the door is open to proceeding in this manner, to allow the chairman sweeping unilateral authority to subpoena political opponents, that door remains open regardless of which party has majority power. I take great exception to the chair's subpoena authorization and will oppose it. Let me say this personally, Mr. Chairman. I have great belief in what this committee does. We have always considered both sides. Since I've been on it, and I've been on it, what, I've been here 26 years. I, it was Joe Biden that asked me to go on it when he was chairman. And to see us do this in this way, with a bulk list of subpoenas, not knowing why anybody on this list is actually being subpoenaed, I think opens this committee to enormous concern and yes, even criticism. So I'm very sorry we're at this day, but on our side, we have to stand up and we have to fight this because it sets a very poor precedent that has never existed before. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Feinstein. Uh, I'm going to say something real quickly, Senator Lee. Yes. Now I'll respond. I want to thank you for the hearing we held yesterday with Mr. Rosenstein. I thought it was enormously helpful and beneficial. I also thought it was something that shows front and center the need for FISA reform. Now, as to the subpoena authorization, I call up the chairman's June 4th, 2020 motion to authorize subpoena related to crossfire hurricane investigation. Um, maybe I can respond to Senator um, Feinstein and we'll open it up for debate and anything y'all would like to do in terms of amending it. Uh, here's what I've come to conclude that the transition issues are probably better left to Senator Johnson. So I know that there was a request by Vice President Biden to unmask General Flynn 
there were some requests by people. Samantha Powers made a lot of requests for unmasking. Maybe there's a legitimate reason, I don't know. But quite frankly, I think our time will be better served to go and look at Crossfire Hurricane uh, and the Mueller report itself. So I don't expect us to be calling people in the transition period. We'll let Senator Johnson do that. So what I do expect us to do is try to find out Rosenstein said he signed the warrant not understanding that the underlying document, the dossier, had been disavowed, and if he had known that, that he wouldn't have signed it. That's pretty stunning to me. I want to ask other people that same question. When you signed this warrant application, did you know what had happened? And they may have a good explanation, and we'll say, okay, we are learning here. But if I find one person in the FBI who told the higher-ups that our case just fell apart and they went forward anyway, there's going to be hell to pay. And it will come from Durham, not us. Now, the court sent a stunning rebuke to the FBI about the way they behaved here. And Senator Lay, you're right. The Horowitz review of FISA warrant applications found a lot of them did not comply with the Woods procedure. And that's what you and Senator Lee are talking about. But this is different. This is not, this is not a failure to comply with the Woods procedure where you kind of check the homework. This is an effort to conceal exculpatory information from the court and manipulate documents provided to the court. We're talking about criminality here. That's not what Mr. Horwitz found. So what I want to do, I want to find out how this happened and make sure it never happens again. No more, no less. And I can't get access to the people at the Department of Justice who did the interviews. And if I need a subpoena to do that, I will. I hope I don't. In terms of what we're doing here, I asked my staff to look at what the committee's done in the past. And in September 25, 2008, Senator Leahy uh, issued a subpoena for the all things related to torture that passed on a party line vote. This is basically a replication of that. And uh, the people's names I put in there is just anybody I could think of that were related to the unmasking or could be potential witnesses in terms of their participation in Crossfire Hurricane and the Mueller report. As to Mr. Mueller, if you want to call him, I will. I would just ask you to think twice about that. If you can find somebody else involved in the Mueller investigation that would serve your purposes, I am very open-minded to calling that person. Uh, to the people on our side, what I'm doing has been done before. And it was pretty obvious to Senator Leahy that Republicans were not going to go where he would like on torture. It's pretty obvious to me that our friends on the other side are not going to go where we think we need to go. And the public can judge whether I'm on some cause for Trump or not. I mean, I think I've got a pretty good record of saying, if that makes sense, I'll do it. I can promise you the president wasn't enamored with the uh, Special Counsel Protection Act. And it really is not about that. It is about trying to find out what happened to the point that the FISA court had to rebuke the FBI in such stunning terms. He's trying to find out why people had their lives turned upside down, probably unnecessarily. And I think that's a legitimate thing for us to do. And this subpoena will allow us the power to get to the bottom of it. And I'll always consult with Senator Feinstein. And I don't know what we'll need to subpoena, what documents, if any. But I am intent on trying to find out what happened. So, Senator Feinstein. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, I would like to introduce an amendment. It's Feinstein uh, number HEN20543. Uh, this amendment would ensure that the ranking member has the same authority to issue subpoenas as the chairman is granting himself. It also ensures that the committee can obtain information about the decisions made in the Michael Flynn and Roger Stone cases. Mr. Chairman, you yourself noted the importance of minority subpoena rights just last year when you introduced a resolution calling on the House to give the Republican minority, and I quote, equal authority to issue subpoenas and other compulsory process. At the time, you described this as an issue of basic fairness. I think the motion today is really a serious departure from our rules and our practice. Um, I said in my remarks two weeks ago, I think it creates unbridled authority to go after Obama-era officials in order to bolster conspiracy theories and denigrate the president's political opponent, Joe Biden. I just put the facts right on the table, ladies and gentlemen. I think if you support my amendment, at least it shows that the committee is willing to follow the facts where they lead and give an opportunity for this side to gain a subpoena, providing the full context surrounding the Russia investigation. It will restore the committee's longstanding tradition of cooperation, lead to a more fair process, and I am hopeful that for all these reasons, my colleagues will support this amendment. Thank now, you, Mr. Chairman. Now, Senator Lay, but I promise you that we're going to call the Department of Justice eventually to inform the committee as to why they decided to drop the case against Mr. Flynn. I think they need to come in here and tell us that. Uh, Senator Lay. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to get set a couple of facts straight. I spoke yesterday on, on the floor, actually, in many ways, my capacity is as dean of the Senate. All the years I've been in the Senate, I don't know that seeing America hurting as much as it is today. Racial injustice has reared its ugly head once again with the murder of George Floyd Senate? at the hands of police. F F I got on Monday, our military joined federal officers who used rubber bullets, smoke, and tear gas agents to forcefully clear hundreds, if not thousands, of Americans exercising their First Amendment rights next to the White House so that the president could briefly pose for a photo op. Senator Kennedy, I think you won't speak, but uh, just if I can respond. I know you're frustrated, but so am I. Let me tell you why I'm frustrated. Senator Coons came to me, I think, with Senator Booker and said, listen, is Trump saying some pretty wild things about Mueller and the Russian hoax and all that good stuff. And I said, yeah, he needs to knock it down a notch. So we introduced legislation, myself, Senator Tillis, Senator Grassley, with Democrats, to let the president know that we believe special counsel Mueller should be allowed to do his job and you shouldn't fire him or any other special counsel unless you have cause. The president believes he and his family were abused by the system. He's pissed off. He thought the whole thing was a hoax. I listened to what he had to say, but I trusted Mueller to do his job. We were able to get Mueller to conclusion. Now, once we find out that the Mueller investigation was run by people who hated Trump's guts, dripping with partisanship, Nobody seems to care. Well, we can't figure out if their hatred for Trump had any effect on their actions. Well, I don't think you have to be that smart to put the puzzle together, but we're going to keep trying. And Mr. Horowitz said he didn't know if the senior top-level officials of the FBI knew about the subsource disavowing the document, but that's something you would want to know. It matters to me whether or not the number two guy at the FBI Comey himself knew the document was no longer reliable and kept using it. And you can't answer that question. None of you can. But I'm going to get the answer to that question. And I want to find out why they kept going after Flynn 
when everybody who'd looked at Flynn said he shouldn't be part of Crossfire Hurricane. We're going to have to do that by ourselves. Y'all could care less. This really says a lot, I think, not good about this committee. But having said that, we're going to go wherever the evidence takes us, and I'm going to try to answer some basic questions about how I got so off the rails and try to explain to the public why the FISA court was so upset. And I don't know if anybody's going to go to jail. People went to jail in the Mueller investigation. Well, I think there's some people who are real good candidates for going to jail for manipulating the FISA application process and abusing the rule of law. So we're going to keep going. And the reason I'm doing this, you've made it abundantly clear. You don't agree with what I'm doing. You think I'm in Trump's pocket. I get all of that. It's not lost on me of what you think. And I'm sad because I like you all. But to expect me to punt, you didn't forget it. We're not going to punt. We're not going to have a rule of law for Republicans and a rule of law for Democrats. Where it's okay to turn the Republican nominee's life upside down. And when you find out there was abuses in that system, not to ask questions how that happened, to make sure it never happens again to anybody. So we're going we're gonna to keep pressing forward. And the reason I'm doing the subpoena is because it's clear to me you're not going to help me. And it gives me the authority to do what I think I need to do. And Senator Lay, in 2008, I'm going to introduce for the record your subpoena motion. It's, it's virtually exactly the same. You'd come to conclude that there were times when the Republicans wouldn't go where you wanted to go on torture. And you were right, because every Republican voted no. I just now know up front, I'd be an idiot to believe that you're going to help me. You're not. And you can fight. And if you want to hear from Mueller, we'll hear from Mueller. You want to know why Flynn's case was dropped? I want to know too. I promise you they'll have to come in here and answer that. But off we go. This is a matter that we ought to be very concerned about. To the point where, if you followed it, the Secretary of Defense apparently nodded in favor of the president's position, and he isn't over it, maybe he never will, and by a chairman who wants him to have another day to make his point about how he was mistreated. Yeah, with all due respect, I uh, don't buy what you're saying at all. Years. And yet what we're being asked to do today is to give authority to this chairman. We're about to do something in this committee that is painful. Senator Leahy has explained what happened years ago on the torture issue, and you remember through our mutual friend John McCain what this Senate went through in those days. It was a rare moment, and the battle went on for years and years and years. And yet what we're being asked to do today is to give authority to this chairman that really is going to end, put an official end, to the bipartisan comedy which has been part of this committee forever. That is unfortunate. In the list of 53, how do we happen to just happen to have the campaign manager for Joe Biden's presidential campaign on that list? I'm afraid it's very obvious. This is about a president who just can't get over it, maybe he never will, and by a chairman who wants him to have another day to make his point about how he was mistreated. Yeah, with all due respect, I uh, don't buy what you're saying at all. I, don't, I didn't expect you well, to. Well, you know, here's the deal, Senator Durbin. For two and a half years, the Trump campaign was looked at. Did they collude with the Russians? What do we know now? The Democratic Party nominee through Fusion GPS spent over $100,000 hiring a foreign British agent who found a Russian who provided Mr. Steele a bunch of garbage against candidate Trump that wound up being used by a FISA court multiple times to get a warrant against an American citizen. Mr. Chairman, that is your theory. No, that's you're a ent fact. You're entitled to your These theory. are facts. When you stepped out yesterday, These are when facts. you stepped out yesterday, Mr. Rosenstein was asked twice whether the Steele dossier, which rises, raises the blood pressure of Republicans by 40 points every time the name's mentioned, had nothing to do with the conclusion of the Mueller report. Uh, but, but, the substance uh, of the Mueller report. Would you please, you know, so, with all due respect, Senator Durbin,
The dossier was the key document to get a warrant, without which there would be no warrant. If you don't believe me, ask for Mr. Horowitz. And the net result of it was the, the, with no impact. You're trying, on to, you're trying to change the topic. Here's the topic. Is Senator Kennedy right? Did this whole debacle happen because some person one or two low-level agents knew that it was a bunch of garbage and didn't tell anybody and just misled the whole system and cave and call me your innocent victims. I am absolutely confident that it is impossible to believe that one of the most prominent investigations in the history of the FBI, a sitting president, that when the case fell apart, nobody found out about it, that they interviewed the man three times in January, once in March, and once in May, and he disavowed the entire document used to get a warrant, and it never worked its way up to the top? Isn't that a, a fascinating concept that it could be just this one or two people down at the bottom? We're going to find out that, and if it is, so be it. But I can promise you this, this is a big, big deal to us. The Mueller investigation was a big deal for the country. We need to know, was the president, was the nominee of the Republican Party a Russian agent? We looked, $30 million, subpoena after subpoena. Now we need to know, did the Democratic Party hire a foreign agent to find a Russian stooge to dupe the, foreign, uh, the FISA court? And did the FBI know about it and did they play along with it? We're gonna find that out. If we have to do it by ourselves, we're gonna find it out, Senator Cruz. Senator, may I conclude, Mr. Yes. Chairman? May I conclude? Yes, you may. Your personal feelings on this are very clear and you've expressed them over and over. We know where this committee is headed. I don't believe this is a priority or timely. You do, and that you're the chairman. You've got the votes. Uh, but I do believe what Senator Feinstein has asked for is not unreasonable, that there be some sort of bipartisan comedy and collaboration in this effort, as there has been in the history of this committee. The second thing is I'll be offering amendments, as other members will, that if you found 53 witnesses that you'd like to hear from, we've got a 10 or 11 we'd like to hear from who have personal knowledge of the facts that you're talking about, but were somehow admitted, omitted from the list that you produced. So I'll leave it at that and support Senator Feinstein. Mr. Chairman, before you go to Senator Cruz, can we get a sense of how long we're going to be here? Because some of us have other committees, and with all due respect, I don't think anybody in private ever disagrees with me when I say it's bullshit the way people grandstand for cameras in here.